name's Grant Stain, and every week on a Wednesday for the past um, a long time, well over a year, I've been uh, going live to a closed inner circle group of our BLAM partners. Now, BLAM is a business that helps uh, people who want to set up their own marketing agency, um, set up and then scale their business selling websites and apps to small businesses. So my role on a Wednesday is to help educate those small business owners and to help uh, help them grow their business by selling digital marketing tools and digital marketing products to small businesses. And we've got partners all over the world. So um, we've got a lot of experience in working in multiple different marketplaces. So what I've uh, committed to do is now on a Thursday is to taking that information that I deliver on a Wednesday uh, and putting it out to the broader community on Instagram and um, Blam Academy um, because the advice that I give is, is, is it's worthwhile listening to if you are a budding entrepreneur, if you're, uh, if you're looking to start in business or if you've already got a small business. And I really like to try and take things back to basics um, to help you remind you of some stuff that you may have already already learned in the past, but then forgetting to uh, you're forgetting it to apply it in your business or it's not in your plan if you're looking to start your business. We're all guilty of this. There's, when you're in business, it is tough. There's so many things to think about. Uh, the list is endless, and you know there's there's no one business person that that that, that gets it all right. Um, but what we want to try and do is get those foundations right. I myself have had have had multiple businesses. Um, started my first business back in 2001, a uh, marketing company, uh, and I've had businesses since in, in all sorts of different sectors. Um, I've had successes, I've had failures, uh, and I always say to people, you know, if you haven't had a few failures, you haven't been trying hard enough <laughs> because the failures are the ones that, that teach you the most. I'm still on an entrepreneurial journey um, and I'm by no means where I want to be in business, uh, but um, I'm enjoying the ride. So uh, what I get great pleasure out of is helping small business owners, people that are looking to set up uh, or, or are uh, in the early stages of setting up their business because I've done that multiple times and I've helped over 300 people around the globe uh, set up in business and go through those early stages. So today's uh, in, uh, message, the little, little presentation that I want to give, is only going to be short, but it's probably one of the most important uh, important things in your business. Um, we call it prospecting touch points, and so um, it's kind of a combination of sales and marketing, this principle. Um, but um, the, the actual presentation that I'm going to give is just one that I've knocked up quickly on the whiteboard behind, uh, is as a result of conversations that I have weekly uh, with the mentees that, that I'm mentoring. And so I, I find the points where they, they've got sticking points, where they've got blockages, and then every week I'll deliver a, a presentation that is, is a recent problem that's been addressed. And earlier in the week, uh, I had one of my, my mentees that I was talking to um, who, who didn't quite understand the amount of work that you have to put in, and particularly in B2B sales, how much work you have to put in to staying in touch with your prospects. So if we go back to basics, um, every single business, if, you're in, if you've got your own business, and by the way, one thing I always say is if you're in business, you are in sales. Because if you don't make sales, you haven't got a business. The one goes with the other. And it doesn't matter who, what, who you are, no matter how big your business is, whether you're, you know, you're Richard Branson or your little, you know, little one-man band or, or, or even me, I'm in sales because I've got a business. Uh, and if you're thinking about being in business, that's the mentality that you've got to have. Um, now, sales is a bit of a dirty word. Um, you know, people tend to have this perception of sales being somebody who's, who's sleazy and trying to you know, be overly persuasive to get people to buy their product. Um, and that's why what, what we always teach now, it's about building relationships in sales. So don't think of yourself as a salesperson in terms of that traditional stereotype that we often think of, you know, the, the sort of Alec Baldwin out of, uh, is it Glen Gary, Glen, Glen Ross, the, the famous sales film or The Wolf of Wall Street. Think of yourself more as a consultant because really all, with sales, well, what we're trying to do is to get in front of as many people as possible to show them what we do and be passionate about the products and services that we offer and see if there's a good fit between their business and your business. And if you've done a good enough job of explaining it and there genuinely is a good fit, then they'll want to buy from you. 
And if there isn't, you've either not done a good enough job of explaining it, or you're not a good fit for each other. And so that's our job, is to get in front of as many people as possible. So we do that first and foremost by building quality leads. Now this is fundamental to any business owner that's in B2B sales. You've got to build a database full of quality prospects, quality, quality leads. Now, depending on your business, there's multiple different ways of doing this. It could be anything from networking. It might be through uh, doing an internet search. It might be through canvassing, door knocking. Um, it could be Google, uh, pay-per-click. It could be Facebook advertising. It could be social media prospecting. There's so many different ways. But by quality leads, we're talking about the decision maker. You want to be having a database that's growing every single week with contacts of people that are going to buy your stuff, who've got the power, the authority to make the decision to buy from you. The bigger your list is, the more sales you're going to get. So that's rule number one. Always build a quality database. Now, we can manage that through a CRM, through a database. There's a million different ways of doing that in terms of the way you manage that content. The most important thing is, is that you have got a way of managing that content. So number one, build quality leads. And then this brings me on to the reason why I chose this as, a, as the subject for this week's talk. Um, you've then got to have uh, a, an ethos of following up with these people. Now, there's a lot of fear around this, a lot of fear about following up, fear that you might be bothering them, that you're going to come across as salesy, that you might be um, you know, perceived as, as, as being a nuisance or spammy. Well, we need, to, we need to get rid of all of those fears because unless you're talking to people, unless you're, you're contacting people, unless you're getting in touch with them to make them aware of what you've got, then you know, how, how are you ever gonna sell anything? You've gotta make that first, first point of contact. So the way that I always do that is make sure that when you initially gather that lead, that you get permission to go to the next step. And the next step's gonna be different depending on what your business is. In most instances, that next step's gonna be some form of appointment, or you might be giving away a bit of consultancy, or it might be that you're gonna be delivering a brochure, or whatever it might be. But either way, you need to confirm what the next step is in your sales process at the point of gathering the lead. So to give you a good example of that, let's say I'm at a networking event, and I meet somebody, they tell me a bit about their business, I tell, me, I tell them a bit about mine, and we exchange business cards. At that point, is when you need to qualify what the next step is. They've given you a business card, so you then need to confirm what, what you're gonna do once you've got that data. So, oh, that's great, thanks for your business card. Is it okay if I get in touch with you to arrange a one-to-one -one next week? By the way, if you've got your diary now, maybe we can get it arranged. Either way, you're getting permission to take it to the next step. And I always try and um, make this um, baby steps for, 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 for people that are new to this kind of thing. Uh, if you're a, you know, an experienced go-getter salesperson, then you'll you know, do your best to get that, that next step now, there and then. But so often when I'm working with budding entrepreneurs, with people that are new to this, they're, they're a little bit nervous, they're a little bit worried about asking for that next step, which is why I always try and break it down into baby steps. So the next step is then they've given you permission to ask for the appointment or whatever it might be. And then you go into these touch points because you've got the data and you've got the permission to contact them, okay? And you've got that verbally. And that can be done over the phone. It doesn't have to be networking. That was one example. It might have been you've done it by email. It might be that they've given you the lead. Um, it's come through pay-per-click Google maybe or Facebook. And straight away you follow back with an email asking for permission for the next step. And that could be those next steps. It could be you're contacting them through email. So you need to have an email strategy. That means that your prospects, which you've quality, gathered the data, you need to have a strategy whereby you are sending out an email regularly to your database. Now, that comes in two different, uh, two different styles. The first style would be that you would do um, your uh, broadcast. So that might be giving value about your business, giving value about, uh, value about your subject matter, uh, about your area of expertise. Um, and then there's the individual emails. So, you know, there, are, there is a lot of spam at the moment when it comes to email. So you can follow up with an email campaign from yourself, individual, to each one of your prospects. Now, I'm not gonna go into the detail. This is a very broad subject. The important thing is that first and foremost, you have a strategy for that. You have an email strategy. Secondly, phone calls. The phone is still a very, very effective way of getting through to people. There's a huge amount of call reluctance. Loads of people 
I mean, I've had it myself when I first set up in business. People are really worried about picking up the phone and having a conversation. All of the anxiety about rejection and everything else comes in. That fear is one of the most useful things you will ever have in your business. Because if you can come overcome that fear, then your, your credibility, your conf confidence, you will grow as a person. And cold calling is the number one fear that I come across with the people that I, um, that I speak to in business, the people that are budding entrepreneurs. And what I mean by that is if you've gathered a piece of data, picking up the phone on a regular basis to try and get hold of this person to then arrange the next step. The next, which might be an appointment, consultancy, whatever it might be. So have a phone uh, uh, regime, phone call regime with targets. So that, in other words, you measure the number of calls that you make every week. You measure it, and this, and we're talking, you know, uh, decent numbers here to get past that call reluctance. Now, I, I talk about this till I'm blue in the face, and I still know that most of you guys won't do this. It's such a breakthrough when you do. When you do get past the call reluctance, it's a huge breakthrough. I still maintain it's the number one most important way of building your business. Not necessarily just because of the results it will get, because the confidence that you will build. If you haven't got call reluctance, I want you to know you are in the minority. Okay. If you are happy to pick up the phone and do dials, you are in the minority and your chances of success are massively elevated in my experience. Okay, so text. If you've got a mobile number, you can text people. We can send text messages. Ten text messages have got something like a 98% open rate. That can be one of the way ways that you, you can prospect and get in touch with people. So don't overdo text, but it's still a very, very powerful way. And there's other forms of text now. You've got your straightforward text, but you've got WhatsApp, you've got Facebook Messenger, You've got DMs through Instagram, all sorts of different messaging uh, systems now. Um, put this into your regime because we, we call it client touch. There's multiple touch points that you can get in touch with one of your prospects. And, and there's so many different ways of doing it. My preference at the moment in most parts of the world, not all, uh, is WhatsApp. A lot of people are using WhatsApp. So quite, quite simply, when you talk to people, uh, you ask permission, says, I use WhatsApp as one of my messengers. Um, is it okay if I add you to my WhatsApp list? Uh, and it's a simple question. Um, Ed, who, who, who's, uh, who works, um, he's our sales director, I hear him say that every day, and he says it very smoothly on the phone. Get them into WhatsApp. The great thing about WhatsApp, you can see when people have looked at the message, when they've opened it, you know, when they're ignoring you. Um, really helps with that kind of thing. Um, and then finally, social, you know, social media is a massive thing now. It, even now, you know, I mean, we're on social media right now, it's such a powerful tool. But even though we're on social media, I speak to loads of small business owners, you know, week in, week out, people don't leverage it the way that they should. I mean, we don't leverage it the way we should. I'm only going live once a week. That's why I'm committing to this. I'm going to go live twice a week now. I should be going live three or four times a week, maybe. You let me know if you like. <laughs> if I get a good response to this, I'll keep doing more of it. Um, so social media is, is a huge way of leveraging your prospects. So uh, you need to make sure that every one of these quality leads, you've got all these multiple different ways, and then you've got a way of measuring how you do the work. Because doing this work, doing this prospecting, is what's going to build your business. Now, I did a little experiment um, a couple of years ago now. When I first started in business, um, when there was a lot more traditional sales training around, they used to say, that there were seven points of contact on average before a sale. So that might mean, for example, you will phone a prospect up seven times on average before you'll actually get the appointment or, uh, that leads to a sale. Now, the last time I measured this a couple of years ago uh, with a call center that I had, so I was doing um, with what I would say were fairly um, average skilled telesales uh, people. So these people are working from a script, they're using uh, a database where they're calling up and trying to book appointments for salespeople. The average number of phone calls that was made to get through to get an appointment that led to a sale was 22, 22 phone calls. Now it used to be seven, but these days there's so many more touch points. We are bombarded with so much more information. Getting past that is really, really important. So this, this message here, all of these different ways of getting through to your prospects has never been more relevant, never been more relevant 
You do have to work like a maniac when you're in business to get results. And only the maniacs survive. I have never met a successful entrepreneur that is not a maniac, never once. So bear that in mind. You need to have, and by maniac, what I mean is work, work, works hard, you know, puts in the graft properly on it all the time, you know, and, and that's what it takes to be successful. Time in, time out, when I get the mentees that go on to great success, and speaking one earlier to earlier today, grind day in, day out. And you know what? When you get to that point, and you love what you do, it doesn't feel like work. So you don't even realize you're working that hard. So, hope you found that useful, guys. I'm gonna be doing this every week now. So I'm gonna go live on Instagram, and I'm gonna go live on Facebook, uh, Plan Academy. For those of you on Instagram that wanna look into the Academy, uh, it's a Facebook group, just type in Blam Academy uh, and check it out. Uh, those of you that wanna find out more about me, grandstain.com is my own personal branding website. But Blam is, is my business um, with my co-founder, Gareth. We run uh, multiple different businesses and we've got um, a variety of different um, uh, products and services that we sell, but predominantly around digital marketing. So whether you're um, a, a budding entrepreneur that's looking to set a digital marketing agency, then we can help. Or if you're looking for website and apps, we can help. Um, but mainly what we're trying to do uh, on systems like this is just it's just give as much value as we can to help budding entrepreneurs grow their business. So I hope you found that useful, guys. And I look forward to seeing you next week. And if anybody's got any questions, I know a lot of people catch up on the, uh, on the Facebook Live afterwards, feel free, stick your questions in. We'll keep an eye on it, and I'll get back to you with anything that's, uh, that's, uh, that's relevant. Thanks, guys.